You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Good evening. We're going to call the meeting to order for the May 25th, 2023, 5 p.m. Um, Board of Fire Commissioners meeting. First order of business is to consider and, uh, and approve the minutes of April 27, 2023 meeting. So moved. Second. Same. Motion made and second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approve. Under personnel report, we have of the four firefighters that were out, two have returned on light duty and two remain out on long term injury right now. Uh, we still continue to have a staffing problem uh, that's been ongoing here. Um, uh, responses from between the volunteers getting to the scenes. So that's going to be a continuation of that we're going to be looking for and we'll be talking pretty soon about our study that we have compiled there, our draft study that we want to present to the town fathers um, to talk about um, adding more personnel to the fire department. Under finance, Commissioner Riccio uh, is absent tonight. Um, we have right here, uh, Chief, you want to talk about that, our transfer that was requested? Yeah, so our transfer was, uh, was approved, uh, if you remember, we approved mm -hmm. It in April, um, it missed um, the April Board of Finance, and then they didn't hold their, um, or March, when did we approve it? I don't remember. Yeah. But we missed that first that first Board of Finance meeting, and then they canceled it there in between meetings that we just heard it the other day. Um, so those, we're in the process now to go to public services next to Thursday. Good. Um, we're gonna end up having to make another transfer, obviously, at the end of the year to you. settle up. And this transfer is for this was for the um, um, from the personnel sa personnel salaries account to the overtime account and then some other accounts where I had a surplus um, and was able to um, ask to be transferred into our supply accounts which because of the inflationary environment are in deficit. Mm -hmm. Good. And we are the proposed budget that was approved has a 250 in it in contingency for the. Um, it's in the contingency, staff. so our, our next move would have to, and hopefully at the June meeting of the Board of Finance, should they hold one, um, we would like to go and ask for that 250 so we can begin in July. Good. And we have a plan. And we, we plan to have this ready by yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. Good. Is, does just the Board of Finance have to approve that? Or does it have to go through the whole? I think it has to go to Ways and Means and Public Services, if I remember correctly. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has to go before the full RTM or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, ends so it up has to go through the every, every. We'll go to the committees and then they'll present. And mm -hmm. of course, I think that would be a night that we would. Got to remember, they do have a recess, the RTM does for the summer. So we want to take that into consideration. We may have to move it up because it's vital, especially with the summer coming now, that we're going to need personnel down there. Mm. Right, right. Yeah. When's the Board of Finance meeting? Um, they typically meet the um, last Monday of the month, right? And um, well, That's a holiday. No, this June, month June is, but this is the June meeting. Definitely. Even though that request was under our budget, they put it into contingency, so we still have to go back, and that's the process. Yeah, because you know how the process is. Um, there's so many departments presenting. There's not really a lot of time to get into mm -hmm. a lot of detail. So um, Finance Director Finch felt that was the best mm -hmm. way to go about it. Okay. Gotcha. We're going to have trouble then. Yeah, but, but I'm through. saying what the process is works right now. It's May right now. The Board of Fire Commission has already approved. I know. Yeah, in June. Is it the last Monday in June? Yeah. Yes. So, so yes. then it would get to the RTM. Theoretically, could you start? Yes, we could. Okay. Yeah, we have an overtime account, overtime so we account. can start, and then if they, for whatever reason, say no, then we'll have to. Yeah, because the need's going to be now. <laughs> I mean, the population well, down there on the shore take, grows. Take the medic two crew, or something, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a word around. Yeah. yeah. Good. A temporary word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And like we said, this is only just putting 
but we're putting something in the dike. That's that's you know to get ready, ready to explode. That's all we're doing. Just continue. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there, Absolutely. Speaking of company, is there a problem with the bridge again now? Oh. I was down there the other day. And it was. Uh, the, the, the gas companies they're struggling with. Um, they have a lot of uh, connections, but. Uh, 12 inch feeds, 8 inch feeds, 4 inch feeds, so everything's intersecting. So they're building some boxes in there, some permanent oak boxes right now, so okay. they can work in there because instead of excavating and de excavating every day, but they have to fill it in for the weekend, Memorial Day weekend. They have to fill it back up because, you know, yeah. that hole can explode. It's nearly impossible to get through there. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Between what they're doing on the bridge and then what the gas company is doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an obstacle course. The objective is, is by Father's Day um, weekend. Yeah, the, the road race. They have to have the road. Oh yeah. And all smooth and ready and done, and then they're going to come back after Labor Day and finish the bridge. That's the plan right now. So they're going to leave again and come back again. Yeah. Well, it's taking longer than the Q Bridge, so. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it you know, well, eight foot bridge. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they had had a design error on one thing that they went to put in. Uh, they had a couple design errors. The covert box was uh, a foot too high. Too. That was the engineer's problem. They had to lo lower that. Luckily, they caught that before they actually set it to the elevation. Yeah. Yeah. And then the gate was wrong. Yeah. The, everything was out of skew. The forms gave in. So. Yep. So, bridge over troubled water. It keeps going. Yep. <laughs> Good. Hello there. How are you? Okay. We're going to move right now on to training. We don't have a report. Commissioner Clinton is absent. Apparatus. Apparatus. <coughs> um, some, of, some of these um, uh, apparatus issues might be a month old, but for the purposes of the general public so they can understand some of the stuff that, that's going on. So all of our ambulances um, have a power lift so that firefighters don't have to uh, lift them up so it, it, it raises them and feeds it into the apparatus bay and so medic 3 had uh, had a, a problem with its power lift it was uh, which is a striker problem uh, who makes the um, this, the whole uh, lift and the stretcher um, and it was determined that it was uh, uh, an issue with the battery and that's been fixed on medic 3 um, engine 1 20 foot ladder open door sensor was found to be bad, so that was fixed. So this is, again for the public, this is a, a sensor that lets them know that the ladder is could possibly not be secure. Um, and so that was a faulty sensor, same, same sort of sensor that most of us have in a car, but this is for a ladder, um, and that's been fixed as well. Um, uh, rescue 2 Hearst Ram uh, was returned, and, and so this is um, this is a tool that's used by firefighters for doing uh, for extractions, um, which is hydraulic, um, and uh, that has also been fixed. This was this, this was the electric one, right? The cordless one, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so that's been fixed as well. Preventative maintenance. I see an oil change here on Rescue Two. Um, engine five, uh, the tank. Oh, so the tank level on engine five is, so is this for the new engine, Chief? Yes, there's a problem with the tank water level indicator. Um, we're kind of fighting with them right now over warranty. They, um, they're oh, willing warranty. to credit part of it, but not the whole thing, and we, we disagree with that. So I disagree. Fighting. Yeah, that's under warranty. I mean, it, that's baloney. While it was under it's warranty, <laughs> yeah. they replaced it the first yeah. time, and it clearly wasn't yeah. the issue. So we're trying to fix that. We're going to fight them. We're not paying for that. Yeah. It's warranty. And I believe that is all. Okay. Chief, did it, what did I miss? Um, well, number one, we're using uh, First Do now. We're trying to get uh, a better report for you. Okay. Um, so it could be a little bit more... Um, in one spot than having to, uh, you know, print out a bunch of individual pieces of paper. Um, but as you know, uh, the repairs are ongoing. Um, Dan does a great job of keeping up with everything. We've, um, we've done, um, you know, all the PMs this year. He's um, 
Engine one's getting new brakes. Engine two's getting new tires. Those tires are very expensive, so we're talking, you know, almost four thousand dollars for the tires. Um, but they may be the last tires we ever put on that truck, so we'll see. Yep. I certainly won't have. So to you know, I actually that um, mentioned before. I just remembered one other thing I'd like to add. Um, and that was all of the ins inspections of all of the fire extinguishers um, were uh, has been conducted, and so that was one of those um, requirements uh, mm -hmm. that's on all the time. So I I actually showed up because I wanted to um, see the extent of it, and so I I. I I hung around for a couple of apparatus and I realized that we have a lot of fire extinguishers and they all have to be checked and tests, tested um, annually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. And that's all I have. Uh, Marine 2 and Marine 5 all set for the summer? They are all set. So. Danny finished the PMs. Um, we replaced a couple of batteries on Marine 2 the other day. Marine 2 should be, um, it's getting uh, new lettering which actually the purchase order was in a previous budget year, but Auto Graphics is getting around to finally getting it done. Some COVID related issues and they, they're playing catch up. Our mobile transports are good. Um, All set should to be go. good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Good job. All right. Commissioner Fox. EMS. EMS. It's a big, busy week for you. I know that. <laughs> busy week. Right, right. So, yeah, Facebook. Um, yeah, so I guess thing. the first thing I would want everyone to know is that um, two of our paramedics were honored this week uh, for code saves in the year 2022. Um, I was really privileged to attend the um, awards luncheon, I guess you would call it, at the uh, EMS Training Center. Um, and um, one of our survivors was there to oh, speak. Nice. Yeah. Um, it was a very kind of moving experience, really, mm -hmm. to see there were 40 code saves in that year in the New Haven area. And there were, I don't know, it must have been a half a dozen or more uh, people who had survived. Mm -hmm. um, and we had our telecommunicator from... Uh, and the tele our, yeah. our telecommunicator from Brantford was given the award for the telecommunicator of the year. That was nice. Oh, wow. Which was very nice. Yep. Yes. Yes. Very nice. So that was started off Tuesday. And then, as usual, as I say every month, the call volume is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, our ambulance revenue will exceed our budget target by more than $400,000 this year, which tells the story of the call volume. Transfer should not be an issue. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> yeah, the right. The transfer should not be an issue. And, and to date, <laughs> the to date number, 2054519 So we're over $2 million. Um, Already. Which, uh, by the end of the month, we'll have um, recorded our largest revenue um, ever, um, and we'll finish the year significantly higher than that. So we typically bring in 100, we've been averaging 177,000 per month, and so we have a full month and, and a little bit more of May to go. So Wasn't yeah. the beginning of the year slow? Beginning of last summer or not? Well, we started to pick up last summer okay. in um, April. So we had kind of, the, you know, we had the, the down dip in COVID years. Yep. And then last April is where we started to come out of it. And if you remember, right before COVID, we had our busiest year ever. We did uh, 6,000 and change calls. Um, then, of course, we had the COVID years, and you could see the dip in call volume. As soon as COVID was over and April hit, we went right back up. And so we finished last year with our busiest year ever. 64.15 was the total number of runs. And this year, we're probably going to hit 6,700, roughly. And of those runs, 78% of them are transports to the hospital. Um, and we continue. That's a lot. To, that's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And we continue to see almost daily some kind of hospital diversion. Yes, so it was Bridgeport. Bridgeport, yeah, today. But that's it's right now. Yeah, VA. it's been on. <laughs> it's been on all day. VA. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and that, therefore takes our personnel yep. 
out of town for longer periods of time. Gives us fewer firefighters. Yeah, it's crazy. So, to put maybe in perspective again for the public, this April was my 20th year of sitting on this commission, and I remember uh, coming to the first meeting and seeing the previous year's um, ambulance revenues of our just under nine hundred thousand dollars, and we're now at two million dollars, over two million dollars. We're going to be close to twenty, two point five million. Yeah, two point five million mm -hmm. by the end of the year. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. So, that's. Good job. Thank you for all everyone. Everyone does. Thank you. Billy's Commissioner Hearn. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Um, so as you can see in the report, the uh, second floor of Station 9 came up beautifully. Um, so between the, uh, the stonework that was just done and the second floor, um, it's really nice down there now. Um, and, you know, can't mention enough the, uh, the public support we had. I know we mentioned it last, last month, but, um, you know, that they contributed to that kitchen uh, within a couple of days. Uh, Mark Steinberg mm -hmm. had, had yeah. money to buy everything we needed, so thank you again for that. Um, I drove by the other day and saw the paint trucks out out front. DGB's painting. Okay, we're over ten years old now in the building, so the weather gets to it, and uh, uh, good to see that the town's taking care of it. So, um, and uh, the firefighter monument that's outside um, has recently been updated. Um, with new names, and um, one of which is uh, Commissioner Massey's dad, and the other one that's on there is my dad. Um, mm. So, very happy about that. Yeah. Um, thank you to the He'd chief for getting that done. Chief. <clears throat> Much appreciated. I sent it to my whole family. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> and they're also working on a, a quote um, for a dedication um, plaque down at Station 9. Um, Maybe we can have a small ceremony down there when you mm -hmm. get. Yep. Um, and do you want to talk about this, Tom? Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's a, a good opportunity. So <coughs> go ahead and lead the way. So uh, uh, that, we talked about this a little bit last month, but the mm -hmm. town has um, some property out east uh, that the chief is um, going after, so to speak. Um, and I don't know who. Superimposed this engineering. On engineering did. Uh, they did a nice job um, of putting what a firehouse would look like on that property, um, and uh, you know it's something that the building itself is needed. It's our longest response time out to that area of town, and that area of town <coughs> keeps growing. Um, the apartments uh, by exit 55, I believe, are all sold out. There's a waiting list as they waiting. add them to um, wow. completion, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and all the tech stuff and um, everything else that's out there. Uh, it's only a matter of time before our call volume in that area just keeps getting crazier yep. and crazier. So. Well, and our response uh, time is not good. Right. All the way down into right. Stony Creek. So what do you think the next steps on this are? I think what um, I'd like the commission to take action on it would be to um, send a letter to the first selectman or the board of selectmen asking that they um, earmark that property for us. Um, and then, um, you know, that we can start doing maybe some more, you know, like the phase one. Yeah. See what. It's 43 Acorn, right? For uh, 32. Oh, 32? Thirty-two. I'll make a motion then. So the the um, dimensions that are on there were given. Um, so <laughs> station nine is a fifty-five fifty footprint. This was a um, sixty by eighty on the first floor, and then the second floor we we pretty much could live with what yes. the space that we have. Um, but um, we didn't. What we don't, didn't have in Indian Neck was space. So um, Acorn has space where we could add. A true two bay um, with two larger pieces of apparatus and two smaller pieces of apparatus at a minimum, and then also um, you know plan for a gym and a, and a first floor washroom, um, and and we wouldn't have the stairs jutting into the apparatus bay as we do down there. So um, 
Kevin, our, um, one of our assistant town engineers, um, was kind enough to take the dimensions, put them on the property, considering the, the setbacks, the wetlands, yeah. the tree, um, there's a uh, stand of trees that are earmarked for uh, preservation on that property. And uh, again, this property was a contaminated property that's been given a, um, went into foreclosure, the town obtained it on foreclosure, and the town has received from the DEP a um, clean bill of health on the property. We have okay, a so motion from- I'll make a motion that we uh, send a letter to the first selectman expressing our, our uh, desire to put that property aside for the fire department. I'll second, second that. Okay. Okay, motion made and second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Everybody good? I'll do that this week, Chief, with you. <clears throat> um, we're not the beginning of next week. I'll hand deliver it to the White House. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else on the buildings? Nope. Good. Uh, pension communications. We have no report. Chief's report. And so, um, you know, we can continue to be busy. We're over 6,000 calls for the year already. Um, we average over 500 a month, so I fully expect this, you know, call volume to exceed our busiest year. Um, the um, statistics pretty much have stayed the same. We're um, up to 18, um, almost 18 and a half calls per day. But of course, as you know, some days we do 30 calls, some days we do 14 calls. It depends on, on the day. Um, one of the things that happens frequently and, and we'll address in the, in the report is the overlapping calls. So, you know, we'll go long periods where there's no calls, but when we get calls, we often get them in threes, fours, <laughs> and um, all of our resources get, um, get used up rather quickly at, at that point. Um, EMS is the largest driver of our need for service, and uh, it's busy. Um, we did have a significant structure fire in April, um, but again, because we were able to get there quickly, um, we contained it. Um, Pretty much to the exterior, it did, it did start to get in the building. The couple that lived in the home with their uh, dog were, were awakened to um, the smoke. And, uh, you know, at 3.08 in the morning, that, that was lucky for them. The fire did start on the exterior and then extended inside. And it was most likely caused by, um, you know, we, we were in the drought conditions at that time. And they hadn't been running a, um, um, a camp stove outside the house. So that is... Uh, the most likely cause of that. Um, so, um, again, uh, you mentioned it about the um, Station 9 to thank the public, but I, I think I would also like to go further and thank Rich uh, Balzano from uh, RAV Associates. They donated the cabinets a long time ago. So they were long overdue for, for being thanked for that, and they're finally up. So we're going to actually send them the picture along with uh, you know, our thank you letter. Um, certainly Massey Glass for storage of those cabinets for all that time um, and also arranging for Smedley Crane um, to donate a lull to get the um, Sony Creek Quarry um, countertops up into the uh, second floor you couldn't bring and um, Try. you know that saved a, a significant amount of money to the public uh, probably renting that lull um, alone would, would be several thousand dollars so we had to thank Gator Joe too. He coordinated. And took Gator it over Joe, from us. Yeah, he coordinated. You know, yeah, Gator yeah. Joe, we call him. Um, <laughs> so certainly, um, kick this right out of the way. We appreciate all the support that we get um, all the time. And um, the Herzogs donated lunch today for part of our uh, EMS week, which was very kind yes, of them that was as well. Nice so that. I want to uh, thank them yep. for that. Um, so the draft staffing report's been, you know, uh, this is first draft. It is, it is just that. It's a compile, uh, compilation of information um, to support um, the conclusions in the re that you'll see in the report. What I'd like you to do over the next uh, couple of weeks is go through it, chew it up, spit it out, give us criticism. Um, it may look completely different than it does in its present form. You know, I'm not sure I like the style and format. And um, it may be, you know, we may cut out some of the information just because there's too much or, or whatever. But that's... That's where we are. Um, it is, uh, you know, it makes uh, several recommendations. The first one being what we've already spoken about, which would be to um, put a finger in the dike um, for the staffing at Station 9 by utilizing the money from contingency, um, but also requesting from the Board of Finance that we do staff that station. As you know, we need a minimum of eight firefighters to put a single apparatus on because it takes 
um, a minimum of two people to be on an apparatus. Um, and you know that that's a uh, significant cost. Um, we've been successful in applying for safer grants, which would, um, if we were successful, would help us spread that cost to the taxpayer in over three years. And typically, uh, they they've been running 100% with no cost share, but that was under the COVID authorization, so it'll probably go back to its traditional 75 uh, for the first two years, and then 35 in the third year percent of the uh, overall cost. Um, so if um, if that's successful, then um, you know that that would be our, our goal to, to staff station nine, um, and then the um, identifying the station out east. As you know, that's a growing area of of, um, of town. We currently have a f almost five hundred thousand square foot proposal out there, um, and I but I think it's important for for the public to know right now is that. Our call volume right now, on a daily basis, exceeds our available resources of the staffing that we have. It relies completely on the volunteer system. Volunteer system right now, um, despite all we've done, we interviewed another volunteer today. He's probably been great, but he wants to be a, a career firefighter of some sort. You know, so that that's typically we might get him for a couple of years, um, and and we'll take all the help we can get. But then we lose them, and so we have enough right now to support. Um, and I'm saying this, you know, honestly, unreliably to support Engine 2 and Engine 5 um, because the members of Engine 4 and Engine 9, are, they're combining to get at least one engine out uptown. Um, but during working hours, um, depending on the night, we, we just, it's too unreliable it's at this point. Yeah. So, um, and then the EMS is so busy in this town that it's stripping our firefighting resources to cover the ambulance call. So we, you know, we, we present a couple of, of options. We've, we've looked at uh, commercial ambulance service. Um, I think two things would happen with that. And, and um, one, they do not do it for free. They would do it um, if we wanted to guarantee the same level of coverage we have today, that would be a cost almost as significant as providing it ourselves, well, it would probably be less expensive, we then would be getting the revenue for the transports. We would also still have to provide the first responder medical service to the community because the ambulances transport out of town, um, you need um, that interim coverage. So that's where the, you know, when you, see, when you get that fire engine getting sent to a medical call, it's going there as a first responder. And also when we have higher level medical calls, we need more hands up front that's why we send the extra units. So a uh, commercial ambulance um, probably isn't the best option for Brantford, and, and we also feel that most importantly, the, um, the level of service would decline considerably. And um, not to take away the good work of, of the EMTs and paramedics, but it's just a factor of, of how they operate. Um, the other um, possibility is some type of mixed, um, you know, we could look at a mixed, do we, do we allow, um, Certain doctors, offices, nursing homes, priority to non-emergent style calls. Do we do we sloth those off to a commercial company? But that would require um, you know negotiations with them and, and making sure that was covered. So you know we looked at those various options. They th those again are in the report. Um, I take I ask you to read it um, again. Take it home, beat it up, bring it back, and then um, it's also. Um, there's a, there's a web page that uh, Chief Kozak created um, that mirrors the report. It, it makes it more interactive, easy to read. Uh, again, um, the, the link is in there in your email, the password's in the email. Um, go through it, beat them both up, let us know what you'd like to see changed. Um, and um, we'll, make, we'll make the changes and hopefully by the next, within, you know, I'd like to say two to three weeks we should be closer to finalizing the report so that we can get it out. Sure. I just think it's important Thank to tell you. the public that in 1963 is when the paid fire department started in town with two people on a shift. And we're 60 years later, we still only have one paid engine company, so we are really behind the times. So, and we've grown so much with call volume, so it's just, <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of work here to do to protect. So, it's well needed. Thanks, Chief. AC?
Chief? Um, yeah, so I've been working with the Chief closely with the um, staffing plan, uh, our plan through the website. Um, I, I've learned how to build websites, so it's kind of an yeah, interesting cool. thing. Cool. Pretty good but I, I think it's a good, uh, a good way to consume the information for, you know, those residents who are on the go. Um, they can do it on their phone when they're in the car waiting to pick up a, a kid or so forth. So, um, you know, again, it isn't in a draft format as well. There's some missing information that I didn't get from there and there yet as of today. Um, but I hope to have it all in uh, tomorrow and then uh, I'll be tweaking it so that it's more easily navigable through links and so forth and move around the website. So, um, so yeah, so there's that. Um, training uh, bulletin number two went out. I sent that to you in your email so tonight. Um, this, uh, this month we're covering cancer awareness, uh, specific to firefighter cancers uh, that are prevalent, uh, positive pressure ventilation, and some social media tips to keep us all out of trouble. Um, the, uh, this month we had uh, some help. Um, Mackenzie Spooner put together the cancer portion of it and Tyler Mahoney put together the positive pressure ventilation part, uh, part of it. So their contributions are, should be noticed, uh, noted. Um, and then the past month I took the culture section of uh, the last training bulletin and got an opportunity to meet with each shift and talk about culture. And, um, you know, one thing that I definitely learned is that, uh, you know, we have a whole bunch of people passionate for the Brantford Fire Department and its success, and uh, along with taking care of the, the residents and visitors and business owners in town. Really great conversations. Um, but one thing that did ring true uh, each time was the uh, amount of calls that they're going to and the stress that they're under from it, just due to the, the, the constant uh, call volume. Um, and then the medical calls while, you know, uh, they're responding, going to the hospital, coming back, and it's, you know, about an hour's time to do it. Um, the part that people don't see is the paperwork behind it and uh, the amount of documentation that's required mm. and how long it takes to get that done. And uh, we were kind of talking about it today. Um, the uh, medical control folks keep adding a little bit here and a little bit there, and it all adds up to more time. Um, so they are, are under some pressure and need some relief. And even if the um, uh, the money and contingency is approved to cover some some overtime, it, it is a short term fix because of the uh, uh, it's just going to add more work for them. Yeah. Do. So we we, right. we do need the additional staff. Um, yeah. So that's where that's where I am right now. Good. Nice job. Looks pretty comprehensive. Can't wait to read it. You know? No. You know, of course, we had a couple of. Uh, Social events this month. We we did the um, charity softball game between the union and the uh, the police. They did you let you, me you let you let the police win. No, it's good. We let them win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> they did let me bat, um, uh, which I uh, hadn't swung a bat in about 15 years. But I did hit the ball on the first swing. Um, it was an infield grounder that I was thrown out at first, but I advanced the runner. So, but no credit to uh, to all of our people in the police. Um, this was a charity event for the Brantford Counseling Center's Basic Needs Program, and um, you know it was a good day, and we hope to do it again next year. So that's very nice. Um, I know some of you showed up, and I appreciate the, the support. Um, and today we celebrate. Uh, this is EMS Week, Emergency Medical Services Recognition Week. Um, we had a, a luncheon today that um, we used donations from the public, where um, we often get people wanting to donate just because they feel we did a good job. So we have a, an account that goes into, and that way we can share it with uh, everybody. We, uh, we opened it up to all town employees, um, and we, we had quite a few takers, so it was a nice day. Yeah. That's it. It's good. Old business, um, nothing wrong with business except we keep talking about staffing. So it's not going to leave until we get staffed. New business, uh, we have discussion of the draft proposal we have here. So I'm going to have homework assignment. Yep. Okay. Anything else on a new business? Anything from the public? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Um, by the way, good people are tough to find. I'm in the executive search business. Uh, all levels, all geographies, all industries, etc. cetera. Um, I'm Greg Jerolman, and I just wanted to stop by. Um, 
and acknowledge um, a recent conversation I had with Chief Mahoney. Um, I think it's only fair to bring to the attention of an entity like yourself um, something when it's positive because um, oftentimes when it's not positive, the person's going to come here um, and share his or her insights. So it would seem only fair that when the actions are positive that it, it also takes place. Um, there was recently a uh, very robust discussion about something um, for the Board of Ed of which I guess I've acquired a reputation of advocating um, for certain things from a Board of Ed perspective and very centric to Board of Ed matters. There was discussion about a security system and representations being made by district leaders of communication with other town entities and um, I had met uh, Chief Mahoney at one of the meetings. He was very supportive of some comments and advocating um, in the past. So, you know, to me it was a very obvious kind of thing when, all right, there's a representation being made of conversations and communication taking place. Let's, let's find out. Let's separate fact from fiction. And it was great to speak to the chief. Um, he got back to me the same day. Um, it was a very um, transparent, honest, uh, authentic conversation. And um, it's symptomatic of good leadership. And um, that's the kind of leadership that I wish uh, all entities would uh, in in town would would um, would have, and I felt it appropriate to bring it to your attention. Not that you <coughs> probably don't already know, but you know a little verification here or there um, probably wouldn't hurt. And again, if if it were bad, would I probably be here complaining? Yeah, maybe. So, you know, so it's only fair that I come here. And share this, so I just wanted to uh, bring that to your attention. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank That's you. really it's, nice of you to come. Uh, take your time. My honor. Yeah, thank my you. Honor. We we have we have great leadership in this department. So you do. More you we absolutely do. do. Yeah, we do. Right down, right from the top, a little bit right down to the bottom. So we have a great respected uh, department. Good we, stuff. We appreciate and other stuff. It all yes. flows. Uh, it all flows yep. around. No, we appreciate that. Thank you very much for taking your time to do that. Of course. Much appreciated. Anything else? You know what? I um, one more. thank you for reminding. Yes. Thank you for that, and thank you for reminding me. Um, under the uh, training, I know that uh, Commissioner Clem did mention it last um, meeting, but the training that we did with the police over at the old Canoebrook School was um, was a coordination between fire and EMS. Um, should God forbid there be an active shooter situation, um, um, their job is to go in and stop it. But our job is to just go in and stop the dying and the bleeding. So um, you know, we it was pretty intense, um, but it but it's necessary, and um, it was it was really well done. And I appreciate the police department, um, you know, taking the time to get together. Their officers needed it, we needed it, and um, the training went really well. And I think, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the cohesion between the guns sadly, and the hoses is sadly, good. Sadly, sadly, right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. Hopefully we never have to use it. Okay, any, nothing else under new business? Okay. Um, otherwise, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Motion to adjourn. So have a second. 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 All in favor, 538. All approved. Adjourned. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at brantfordtv.org.